The crowd will tell you what happens. I looked over at the end of the dugout, and there's a horse there, and the horse wasn't stadium trained. <laughs> I don't know how he made the team. His tail went up, and the horse did his thing. And I thought to myself, there's a message there. If I don't get Willie Wilson out, that stuff that's laying on the turf below the horse is exactly what I'm going to be. We've all heard the term. And I looked over at the other end of the dugout, and Dallas Green had his foot on the top step, just about ready to come and get me. And Ron Reed was warming up in the bullpen with steam coming out of his nostrils. He wanted in there bad. And um, Dallas Green was there, and next to Dallas was the Canine Corps, a cop and his dog. And I looked at that dog, and I thought, you know, that is the Canine Corps. And this is the ninth inning, and I need a K. And most of you, I'm sure, know how to keep score. And when somebody strikes out, you mark it in your scorebook as a K. So it was the ninth inning, and I needed a K. So that was my message from the Canine Corps. And uh, then Willie Wilson stepped in, and Bob Boone had come out and he had talked to me, and he said, we're going um, to throw him screwballs. And I said, I've only got one screwball left. And he said, that's great. That's what got us here. Now you only got one left? I said, yeah. When I throw it, my arm hyperextends. It must be tired, and it pinches my crazy bone. You know how you bang your crazy bone on the table? And my two um, fingers were, were getting numb from uh, throwing the screwball. I said, I think I only got about one left. And uh, let's use it right away and set him up for it and have him looking for it. But I don't think I can throw anymore. So Booney said, fine. So Willie steps in there. Booney puts down screwball on the first pitch. And we throw it for strike one. So I get on the mound, look around. The bases are loaded. And I look at the sign, and Booney puts down screwball again. <laughs> you got to remember, Booney graduated from Stanford University with a pre-med degree in psychology. <laughs> And I'm going to shake him off. <laughs> because I went to Tri-City Barber School in the Bowery. <laughs> I graduated with honors. <laughs> I was there on a baseball scholarship. <laughs> so Booney puts down screwball again, and he knew I was going to shake him off, and I did. He puts it down again, and he knew I was going to shake him off. He did it four times. And I kept shaking, I kept shaking. Finally, Willie Wilson, he's standing there and saying, Man, he got that many pitches. <laughs> Finally, Booney puts down the slider. Because we'd gone away with a screwball. We threw a slider down on it. It was a beautiful pitch. Willie fouled it off his foot. <laughs> so, now Booney and I are at odds. Booney's again with the screwball. And... For me, my whole career, 0 and 2 counts, it's always right here. You don't see that too much anymore. It starts, it starts a war if you see that today. But right here, being very careful not to hit the hitter because the bases are loaded, and it is the World Series. So I just wanted to come right in here and get command of the outside corner again, and most hitters will think that if he comes in and the man has a screwball, now he's going to go away with the screwball again. So I want to come in and make Willie think that we were then going away, knowing I didn't want to throw any more screwballs. I'd have Willie looking away, and I'd come right back in. Yes! So, I missed with it, and I left it right out over the plate. And Willie's eyes lit up like a Christmas tree. And by the time he decided to go for it, it completely caught him off guard. He wasn't ready for a pitch, letter high, right out over the plate. It wasn't Christmas, you know? So, he took because by the time he realized what that pitch was, it was too late. It was a high-velocity pitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was ball one. So the mission was still accomplished, because after seeing that pitch, he realized I was not going to take a chance on making another mistake like that. So now Booney's down there flashing more signs, and Willie's saying, got to talk to the scouts, man. That ain't a report, you know? <laughs> so finally, Booney and I hook up with another fastball. This time we wanted to bring it down, get it on the inside part of the plate in hopes that Willie would be looking away and wouldn't have time to adjust. Well, on the way to the ballpark that day, you guys in a hurry? I mean, it is a radio. <laughs> I'm just telling some time for you here. Uh, all right, you guys, I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> 
got enough tape? <laughs> on the way to the ballpark that day, before I throw the last pitch, you got to know this. On the way to the ballpark that day, and throughout most of the summer, Schmitty lives in Springton Lakes, out in Delaware County, on the north side of Media, by the lake. I lived in Rose Valley, near the province, the south side of Media, by the creek. <laughs> Schmitty and I used to drive to the ballpark together all the time. He'd swing down 252, go by my house, and pick me up. He'd always look in his rearview mirror to make sure there weren't any cars around because he didn't want to be seen turning into my driveway. <laughs> and he pulled in at times in a Rolls Royce, mostly in a Mercedes with windshield wipers on the headlights. <laughs> he probably got one of those. <laughs> picks me up regularly. When Schmitty's alive and feeling great, got a couple dingers in him that night, you can almost tell on the way to the ballpark because he wants to drive and I would like to take a nap. No. I have to read Schmitty, the sports page. So I read him the sports page, stop at Baskin Robbins, get an ice cream and off to the ballpark. On the days when Schmitty doesn't feel like driving, I drive and we always take his car because I had a 57 Buick. <laughs> so, when I drive, Schmitty takes a nap. So the last game of the World Series, we're driving to the ballpark together. I'm reading Schmitty the sports page. He's kind of excited. Just a little bit. You know Schmitty. <laughs> Just a little bit excited. So, we're driving to the ballpark and I start to read the sports page and it had to do with everything that happened in Kansas City. And there were some nice accolades towards the Tugger, I think, that uh, Conlon had written. And Schmitty said, you know, I'm getting sick and tired of this. And I'm paraphrasing, but it's very close to quotes. So I'm getting sick and tired of this. He said, all season long, Tug McGraw is a hero. He says, I play nine innings, usually drive in all the runs that we need, usually steal a couple of bases, hit some homers, make some unbelievable plays at third, and go nine innings night after night after night. You come in and pitch an inning, and you're the hero. You jump up in the air, and it's good. The photographer's like that. You get your picture. And I said, hey, if I don't play nine innings, i got to get the most out of my one inning. He says, usually you load them up to draw attention to yourself. And he said, I'm getting sick of all that. He said, tonight i got a feeling that Lefty's going to run out of gas. Carlton, of course, was starting. And he says, I got a feeling you're going to come into the ball game and you're, in, you're going to end up striking somebody out to win it. And you're going to do your act. You're going to jump in the air. And you're probably going to get your picture in the paper the next day. You're going to be the hero. I'll probably drive in runs, make great defensive plays. I might even steal a base. I feel so good. <laughs> but he says, guess what? I'm going to screw it up for you, McGraw. I'm going to run over from third base and I'm going to dive right on top of you, and I'm going to position my body right towards the press box. <laughs> All the cameras will be on me. And I'm going to get my picture in the paper for a change. I said, sure, Smitty, I hope it turns out that way. And of course, we were all just kidding around on the way to the ballpark this way, having fun, trying to stay loose, and that's the way you kind of do things. You bust each other's chops a little bit. Sure, it never happens at MAB, but... <laughs> so sure enough, Willie Wilson's standing there with a one and two count, and I got nothing on my mind but a beer waiting for me from my dad. Possibly uh, a little champagne chaser. And uh, the dogs, I got all that covered. I got the horses covered. And I got two strikes on Willie and one more pitch to go and we're world champions. So Booney finally messes with Willie's mind a little bit. Finally he puts down that fastball we were talking about. We wanted on the inside part of the plate about belt high just to try to, if anything else, we could jam him with it. And sure enough, wind up, make sure you get everything right, give it all you got, reach back for that extra, hope this is the last pitch you have to throw till the spring, and the ball leaves your hand and you can just feel it. Oh yes, 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 hurry up and get there. And you see, and you see, and as you release the ball, you pick up the hitter out of your eye, and you see his shoulders start to lean towards the outside corner, and you go, yes, yes, yes! And that sucker stays right in there, and next thing you know, he tries to adjust, and by the time he swings, it's too late, and he's... Well, the Philadelphia Phillies become world champions, and I jump in the air, and Booney's too tired. Booney stands up, and he starts, oh, walking up. 
And I thought, well, I'm not going to wait around for him. And I go, oh, my God, I wonder if Schmitty remembers what he said in the car. So if you remember the video, I start hopping and I start turning, looking towards third. And here he comes! And he's not even looking at me! 